I was thinking, oh, I'm never going to do this again. Then I went to get changed. When I went to get changed, this little Hispanic kid hugged my leg and said, Santa, I didn't think you would find me. Now I'm going to have Christmas and hug my leg so hard. Every broken piece turn of me came back together that day. I left there in tears and I cried all the way home. But it all started too on the whims of wanting to make kids smile and feel loved. Welcome to Side Hustle Hero, the show that is laser focused to inspire you to take action to start or to scale your side hustle income streams. I'm your host, Joan Possivy, author of The Way Success Works, how to decide, believe and begin to live your best life. Have you ever thought about donning the suit, hat, boots and beard to take on the role of Santa as a side hustle? If you're not an older white male, you may not have previously considered it, but thankfully, times they are a changing, and today we're seeing diversity in Santas. If you check out today's episode artwork, you'll see a photo of our guest Santa. Underneath that yak hair beard is Melissa Rickard. Yes, this Santa is female, but you'd never know it. Her full-time work is as a surgical director for a retina practice, helping people see better. Melissa has a huge heart, so it's not surprising that she's been playing the role of Santa for 28 years. Today, you'll hear about what income range you can expect. Some of her friends make upwards of $40,000 a year as Santa. What you're looking for for startup costs and where to turn to for gigs. Be sure to catch the end of episode takeaway where I'll give you a little nudge to get you thinking about why volunteering should be one aspect of your life if it's not already. But first, you'll hear from Santa, wink, wink, and then today's side hustle hero, Melissa Rickard. Well, welcome, Santa. Oh, hello, Joan. How are you? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Now, welcome to the program. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I sure appreciate the break. We have been so busy up here at the North Pole. Goodness gracious. Holy candy canes. <laughs> well, how is your season going? Well, we just made 4.3 million Barbies today, and other than that, it has been nonstop for the past 360 days. I'm telling you, it's it's now getting to the main the main big show. That's for sure. It's it's getting there, and uh, this is a time where all our tinsels in a tassel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is year round for you. How are your reindeers doing? Are they healthy? Oh, they are doing fantastic. <laughs> Rudolph was trying to buzz the tower the other day and got his left hook stuck at the North Pole Tower, so we had to go up and get his hoof out of that, but he, he's doing real well, and uh, Donner, we had him on a diet. He had gained like 46 pounds, and uh, he's back slim and trim and ready for the ride, so we're, we're doing good. They're just still goofy big dogs with antlers, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks so much for your time, Santa. I know you have a busy schedule, but I understand that Melissa is ready to jump in for you. Oh, yes, she's right here. Oh, she's looking forward to talking to you, Joan. And uh, I'm always so good to see you. You're always on my nice list. Oh, well, that's great to hear, Santa. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Take care, Joan. <laughs> well, hi, Melissa. Welcome. Hi, Joan. How are you doing? That was brilliant. I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you. We all have a little Santa in all our hearts. You sure. uh, Obviously, you must have been doing this for a long time. How many years has it been now? It is 28 years this year. 28 years, the last five professional. Wow. Well, I want to get into to all the Santa stuff for sure, but let's start with a bit of a background. Uh, what are you doing for your full-time year-round work? My full-time year-round work, my grown-up job, if you will, I am a surgical director for a retina practice in Little Rock. It's my job to act as a Sherpa and guide three people through the surgical process from scheduling to procedure details to just being there if they need a question or they're nervous and they just need a hand to hold. That's what I do. I'm also a chaplain as well, so that helps me out a great deal. You only have one set of eyes and they're the windows to the soul, and if I can help someone see better, that's that's what I love to do about this job. It's it's just amazing. Well, that's a busy schedule. And holy jingle bells, how did you end up in the role as Santa? It was fate, Joan. I want to tell you right off the bat, 
I didn't I didn't wake up one day and say, "Hey, I'm a girl. Let's be Santa." <laughs> that was that was not me. That was not me. Not trying to break any ceilings there or or <laughs> any paths. Uh, my dad was a mason and a shriner, rest his soul. And his lodge uh, did a lot of charitable work. And my brother and I were in the youth groups for these. Okay. And every year we went and volunteered at a hospital. And they used the same Santa every year. And um, he had a seizure right after we got the room warmed up as kids. Wow. Um, right before he was supposed to go in the room. Mm. And at this time, I was already I was the oldest person around. And I have never been a small person, Joan. So my my dad asked me if I could fit the suit. And I looked at him like he was nuts. And I said, <laughs> you think I can do it? <laughs> he said, I think you can do it. So I put on this, it had to be like $14 Woolworth suit. Right. See through the felt. It was so crazy. And like the old cotton beers with the sunglass hooks that go around your ears. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I went in there and just, you know, I had memorized it was the night before Christmas. So I had uh, recited that to them. And we had some fun. We told some now they're called dad jokes, but they were just bad jokes back in the day about <laughs> Christmas. And um, uh, we we just had a good time. And I was thinking, oh, I'm never going to do this again. Then I went to get changed. When I went to get changed, I'm going to start tearing up again. This little Hispanic kid hugged my leg and said, Santa, I didn't think you would find me. Um, mm. Because, you know, they're sponsored and they're from different countries and states and whatnot. And you found me and now I'm going to have Christmas and hug my legs so hard. Every broken piece tone of me came back together that day. I left there in tears and I cried all the way home. Oh my. And and then I just started putting on the suit, you know, for high school events and college events and uh, pub crawls, you know, just, you know, a little <laughs> bit of everything just to be Santa. I, I was never one, but I would like be on the start line of the crawls and get them going with a little cap gun. Yeah. But yeah car lots, you know, I just started <laughs> just doing things, but it all started too on the whims of wanting to make kids smile and yeah. feel loved. To, to me, it is just the best thing in the world. That's the gift. The gift is yourself. And I was called to do this. So it was fate. It was fate. Wow. You must've been around 20 at the time. Yes. Yes. I'm 48 yeah. now. Okay. So knock, knocking on the door of 49. I was in, actually, I was in my second year of college, 20 years old. So it's 28 years now. Well, where do you show up now with Santa? Like what types of venues or events? A lot of different ones. I have home visits, you know, where people can book me to come visit them in the home. Okay. I have a elf delivery service for the people who love the elf on the shelves. Uh, Santa deliver them personally. Okay. I, tree lettings, parades. Festivals, wow. venues. I we have a local courthouse near us that's beautifully decorated around Christmas, and we just put on our our suits and walk around and just take pictures. Animal fundraisers, pretty much anything you would like to have a Santa at, I'm there. Which is pretty much everywhere. Pretty much everywhere. Pretty yeah. much everywhere. <laughs> we we did an amazing visit at a uh, PGA golf course this past weekend. Oh really? <laughs> that was that was very fun. So. Pretty much just anywhere, you know, holiday parties, work yeah. environment. How many gigs would you have per season, typically? Typically, I can average anywhere. If you look back at the numbers in 2020 with COVID, I had like 25 visits. And you look at like, so far this year, I'm at roughly 63, 64 visits, not counting the virtual visits and the emails. So I'm up probably mm -hmm. well over 100 with virtual visits and emails. I was going well, to say, over 100. probably pushing, uh, gosh, 150 or so for the season then by the time I December think I'm at 100. Yeah, I think I'm at 173 now if I count all the virtuals and emails. Email is a big part of what I do, live emails. Right. So we sit in my home studio and record an email and send it to them. I do that four hours a night when I get home from work. Wow. Is that through some kind of a uh, platform that people go to? I, I Well, actually, they email me. They can go to my website and actually choose to have an email from Santa. And then I record it through OBS. And then I just, I send it to them through a WeTransfer. OBS? Uh, open source broadcasting, open broadcasting source. Oh, okay. Uh, kind of like a, an editing program, like a, um, 
I know the people in the film industry will call it the right name, but you just record stuff and you can stream from it. <laughs> it's, right. it's pretty cool. So I, I do a lot through that. All the while working full time. Working full time. Plus I'm president of my local Lions Club. Of course you so are. I try to. <laughs> I, I try to do that as well. So uh, we're all female Lions Club too. So it, it's pretty cool. We support our community. Oh, that's fantastic. This is the second year I've been president. I was going to ask you where you get your gigs, but after 28 years and being so well known now in the community, probably a lot of the local stuff comes to you, I, I would imagine at this point. They do. But but to me, I'm still that same boring geek from Pennsylvania, but people find me. I have business cards and websites and I do some direct mailing, and um, but people find me. I have people from California who are Santas and say, hey, I have a person that lives outside of Little Rock, Arkansas that wants a virtual visit. Do you think you could hook them up? Yes. You know, in-person visit. Perfect. Yes. And other local Santas in Arkansas, I had a dear Santa friend that just went on its anniversary vacation and he asked me to cover one of his visits four hours away in Northwest Arkansas. So I went up there for that. So it's the community. It's the people. It's word of mouth. And people are finding you. I found you and I'm in Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> You're down in Little That's Rock, fantastic. Arkansas. <laughs> I see I reached Canada, so I'm good there. So <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, you're global, so <laughs> what do you charge? Right now I'm about $170, $175 a first hour and $75 each additional hours. But I don't I don't make anything off what I make. So why is that? I work hand in hand with a local charity called Last Chance for Arkansas Animal Rescue. And any of my profits, they get donated. Um, I have the the people that book me send the donation directly to Last Chance for Arkansas Animal Rescue. I believe that, Mm. you know, charity comes right from the heart. And I've been blessed by being able to do this, to make people smile, to bring Christmas to them. Mm. So other than gas money... Yes. That's really all that I do. I want to portray Santa in the true spirit of Christmas with the loving and giving. So after your expenses are covered, then whoever hires you pays the charity directly. So they get the tax deduction. They get the tax receipt as well. Absolutely. Now, if a professional service books me like Geek Salad or something like that, then I, I donate that part anonymously. Again, I don't want them to know it's coming from me. That's the whole thing. I want just the spirit of giving. There was an old episode of MASH, if anyone's familiar with MASH, but, you know, (laughs) there was a gift given, but it was a tradition that the gift giver had to remain anonymous. And I I have followed that my whole life when it comes to charity, that it's always anonymous. And it's always like, hey, Mel gave me this. No, I just want people to, to use it where it's needed. Right. Well, do you also get gigs through HireSanta.com? Oh, HireSanta.com, Mitch Allen, he is the best. He, <laughs> <laughs> I love Mitch. HireSanta.com is an amazing platform. I have gotten some gigs. I have met people all over the world. Nice. Can I say more than anything, I recommend HireSanta.com wholeheartedly over everything. It is such an amazing, I don't know how he does this, Joan. I I don't (laughs) know because this man and his team, well, Jenny and the rest of his team wrangle all these Santas from all over the the country, all Mm -hmm. over the world. And they can just dull them out like cards and pick the perfect Santa for an event. (laughs) I mean, if you've ever seen the Shark Tank episode, Google it when you're on Shark Tank. Yeah. Because Mitch Allen and HireSanta.com, they're just... They're actually the best. I I can't say enough nice things about them. They've actually helped a very shy female Christmas performer have confidence and Mm. get out there and really put my name out. How did you connect with them in the first place? (laughs) My life is strange sometimes in a good way. (laughs) I I started a few years back on Facebook. I took a video and audio course hosted by Stuart Deacon Jr. in the the Junior Clause Workshop. And I met a couple of friends, Michael Howell and Michael Bauer, who are part of the Michigan Association of Professional Santas. I'll get into more on that later. Okay. I did um, not know that existed. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, MAPS is one of the, the biggest 
groups out there other than Texas, and there's a lot of other states as well, but they're one of the biggest Santa groups out there, and they are the most supportive people you will ever meet. Their motto is, we're better together, and they prove that every day. So they adopted me as their Arkansas delegation. So (laughs) I ended up making uh, Michael Howe, who I believe is truly Santa. He's just in disguise as a a retired school teacher, but I believe he's truly Santa. Um, (laughs) He's my mentor. He actually took me on. I've learned things from him because you never stop learning. Yes. At school, they have this new game that they've been doing for charity called the Reindeer Games, where Mitch Allen from HireSanta.com and Michael Howe, they have a dozen eggs, six are hard boiled, six are not. Mm-hmm. And they take turns, you know, smashing eggs on their head for charity to see who gets egg first. <laughs> so whoever gets egg first obviously loses. Yes. But you, you raise money for that. I mean, we, I think we raised well over, and uh, I'm sure someone's going to correct me, but it was way over, I think, four or $5,000 up to. I don't know if it was almost $10,000. Well, they raised a lot of money at the CW Howard doing this. But I met Mitch through Michael because Mitch and Michael are are really big on HireSanta.com. Michael's one of Mitch's Santas and just got to talking one day on Facebook. And he's an amazing young man. Nice. Great guy. And so basically once your, I guess, profile is with HireSanta.com, then when requests come into their office, they've got this database now of Santas that they can make that perfect fit. And then obviously they would take a cut and then pay you X number of dollars. Which is good, you know? Yeah. And then let's say I, I get that portion, well, that will get donated. Right. And it's it's fun. It's kind of like literally being Santa. Yeah. And it sounds like they don't require you to be exclusive with them. Then in addition to the work that they're sending you, you can be going out and doing your own thing as well. They're supportive in every way. And you don't see that a lot. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're like a certain person, Santa, you're their Santa, but no, they support you to learn and grow and and do whatever. And being a diverse Santa, that's amazing. Yeah. There's a need for diverse Santas. I've uh, been reading that and seeing that more uh, female Santas, Asian Santas, African-American Santas, everybody. Yeah. Which is terrific. And they're amazing, you know. Dennis speaks sign language. There's mm-hmm. you know, different languages. It's just, it's so neat how we can accommodate everybody. Nice. And it sounds like that's in addition to someone who wants to become a Santa, marketing themselves in their own community, they can also connect with a platform like Mitch's in order to have that source of potential gigs. I'm wanting to get a sense of the startup costs involved. Like how much would it cost to replace your suit and your beard and your boots, like your whole outfit? <laughs> well, I started with that very economical Woolworth suit and I wore yes. it for years. Then I graduated. I graduated into a suit I purchased off eBay, uh, a Halco suit for like 50 bucks. And then I started saving and saving and saving because I wanted Santa's clothes. I didn't want a costume. So being a Philadelphia girl, I'm very familiar with Pierre's costumes, which is also uh, Planet Santa. And I got three suits from Hire Santa, and they made me a a surcoat to wear over my suits. And it took a lot of savings. And they're my go-to pieces now. Okay. Recently, I just invested in, I caught my high-end suit. That was uh, through StuffForSanta.com which is another amazing place, by the way. And that out the door was probably around two grand. Yeah. So that was the the startup cost for the suits. But then I have giveaways. I have the website fees. I have Zoom fees. I have things like that. Mm -hmm. But we manage it and it just works out. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I understand the earnings from a typical Santa through HireSanta.com. Was around mm-hmm. five five to twelve thousand dollars a season. That's a goal for me. But yeah. So I was going to ask you how much you make for the charities. Not anywhere near that. I average uh, quite a few thousand dollars for charities, but not. I don't have the. Well, to just tell it to you plain, a lot of people just don't want to book a female Santa. So I don't pull in that much. Yeah, maybe on the five to six thousand dollar end, that's yeah. no problem. But right. 
My goal someday is 10. I have friends that make like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for the season. So it just all depends. I'm very blessed with my visits. I do a lot of visits. So a lot of big part of it is too, I don't see a lot of it. So yeah, I don't know if they're sending a check for $175 an hour or they're sending a check for like $300 an hour sometimes. Right. Being the female Santa, do most people just assume you're male and you appear male in your Santa suit and oh my gosh yes it (laughs) I haven't been busted yet I have not been (laughs) busted by a kid (laughs) and I was busted by one adult simply because I was in the restroom (laughs) uh, 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 that would be a dilemma you've got all these kids watching you and you walk up to the washroom and you go "Uh uh-oh which one do I choose absolutely the men's or the women's washroom I have it written in some of my contracts for uh, in-person visits that they need to have a separate washroom for me yes. because I don't want to ever take away from that magic. Yes. And I'm not a fan of the men's room, Joan. <laughs> so sure. Normally I, I just ask them to um, have me a separate washroom and er- almost every person has been able to comply. So yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense. But I could see that moment where you're walking up there and you're going, I got to do whatever I need to do. So you walk into the men's one. <laughs> yep. And I, I have, I'm so embarrassed. I have done that. Sure. Thank God for stalls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, most of us women have done that at one point and the other through desperation. And we didn't even have a Santa suit on. So that's it. Motivated by desperation, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned that there will be no lap visits at the Macy's flagship store in New York's Herald Square that Santa is seated behind a desk. What do your in person visits look like? I am like a playground. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm fully COVID boosted and vaccinated. I've had my flu shots, my rabies distemper, everything. And um, <laughs> as long as the parent is okay with it, I will let that kid sit on my lap. I will let him gently touch my beard. I will have that personal contact. And I'll tell you why it's so important. And uh, in the in my friend Michael Powell pointed this out to me. A lot of the young kids, the three-year-olds and under, are COVID children. They don't know the love, the touch, a lot of times, of someone other than mom or dad or their grown-ups. So I want them to experience that. There's a video I just posted on my Facebook from our visit this past weekend at the golf course, and kids are running up and jumping into my arms and just just (laughs) loving on Santa. So, and I get it from a corporate standpoint. They want to protect their staff. They want to protect their clients. I think it's a a great idea from their standpoint, but I love the connection. That's, you got to think in this day and age with all the technology and all the stuff, there's no connection. The power of touch is so important. It is. It is. You know, I, I, I want that connection. I want them to remember, hey, the Santa at this venue, you know, really listened to me and looked me in the eyes and made me feel important. Like I was the only child in the room. You had mentioned your beard. Now that's not just any run of the mill dollar store beard. Tell me about it. (laughs) Uh, My beards are yak sets from ZM hair. Maggie makes them. She's based in China and they're amazing. They're all hand tied, hand knotted. They're held on by the elastic strap they come with. And then uh, Walker's No Shine tape on my face. So they're actually glued to my face. They wow. don't come off, though. I want them off. It's like real hair. I mean, you touch it, it feels like a real beard. You can't see the lace edges because I can feel them. Yes. They are so realistic. They're yeah. amazing. Yeah, care. So. Love it. That's how dedicated you are to this. With so much typically going on for people during the holidays, and you've got more than a full schedule, why do you do Santa? I want to put a smile on children's faces in a world that doesn't have very many smiles. Mm. I I guess I'm I'm wired a little strange because I really just want to make people happy. No one is perfect. We're all fearfully and wonderfully made, but... I just want to spread some happiness and keep that magic of Christmas alive as long as possible. That's why I do it. Yeah. And nice. Just that going back to that little kid that was hugging me back in the day, you see the joy and you see that sparkle and that smile and it just, it makes them happy. So it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Well, is there something that I should have 
asked you that I haven't yet? I am married to a wonderfully supportive husband. <laughs> we were dating. I told him I was Santa Claus, and he, he looked at me like, um, maybe I shouldn't be dating this girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, Let me uh, rethink this relationship. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, maybe uh, she should be in an institution. But um, he was really, been really accepting with it. A lot of people ask me that, you know, is your husband cool with what you do? Because, Joan, all my friends are dudes. I mean, all my friends is, friends are guys. They're all Santa's, yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, Johnny supports me 100%. He, he's amazing. My best friend, Maggie, plays my Mrs. Claus and my elf. <laughs> simply because as Mrs. Claus, my husband looks terrible in a dress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I love you, uh, Melissa, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. We're just not doing this. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. They uh, and and both our husbands support us, and it's pretty neat because there's a lot of uh, speculation. There's a lot of, hey, what kind of relationship do you have here? But um, I have I have a wonderfully wonderfully supportive husband and best friend, which is really cool. Excellent. Well, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you, Melissa? The best way for listeners to connect to me is to visit my website. It's kringleandco.net, but it's spelled out. It's kringle, A-N-D, co, C-O, dot net. Okay. And there's contact forms on there. Not necessarily. I mean, you can book me online, but if you just want to reach out with questions or comments, just send me a message. I, I am happy to talk with people. I I love what I do, and and I love hearing people's opinions and differences and it's just amazing to connect with people oh that's terrific that's very kind of you thank you with all you've got going and on and all you've accomplished you clearly know how to take action what's your best tip melissa to inspire others to pursue their side hustle dream i love this question if you have a hobby a passion a love or an interest in anything and it tugs on your heart to pursue that in a more dedicated action, do it. Go with your gut feeling. Don't sit on your laurels. Take that risk. There's so many people nowadays that are just so afraid of taking that leap of faith. Grab that faith. Take that leap because it, it will pay off. I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> you know, don't limit yourself and follow your passions and surround yourself with those who support you. That's one of the best things in the world is surround yourself with people that support you and don't toss off the naysayers, learn from them. I know it sounds like the quintessential answer, just follow your dreams. But if you have that passion, just follow it because you can do it. Don't stop doubting yourselves because if you doubt yourself, you're never going to take the step. Just do it and and you can succeed. I know it. Words of wisdom from Santa. (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much, Santa Melissa, for helping us learn about what's involved in the business of being Santa and for being today's side hustle hero. Oh, gosh, thank you so much. I I am so blessed to come on and talk to you. Big fan. And um, again, I want to wish everyone that's listening a very, very Merry Christmas, a beautiful holiday season. And I know your lives will be magical. Thank you again. And all the best of the season to you too, Melissa. Great. Thank you so much. You take care, Ms. Jones. Melissa mentioned that she's president for the second time of her local Lions Club. When you become a lion, you become part of a global network of volunteers working together to make a difference. It gives you the ability to contribute on both a local as well as an international scale, which I got to tell you is hugely rewarding. Growing up, volunteering was not part of my program. It really wasn't something that we discussed in my family. Then one day, Dave Douglas, who was a client of mine, for whom I presented many seminars and trainings at the organization where he worked, asked me if I would volunteer my time to come to teach at a Rotary event for young adults known as RILA, the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. Not having a clue what Rotary was or did, I said yes because of my respect and admiration for Dave. Turns out, I loved working with this audience of 19 to 30-year-olds, and it became the focus of my work. Thankfully, they kept asking me back every year to present at this annual event that I've now been doing for about 27 years. 
You've likely heard the expression that it's better to give than to receive. Well, in my books, that's because it feels so great to give. You're switching your focus from you and your situation, maybe your problems, and forced to focus on others and giving. And the feeling is wonderful. Eventually, I became a member of Rotary International, a global network of 1.4 million people who volunteer their skills and resources to solve problems and address community needs. If you do decide to volunteer, first and foremost, you want to do it out of a desire to give back, to contribute. Don't join based on what you think you'll get, but rather what you can give, what you can contribute. It'll be some combination of your skills, talent, time, and energy. And by doing so, you receive so much in return. There are many awesome organizers and trainers that come together for RILA. And I honestly don't know who benefits most, the attendees or campers as they're called, or us who are volunteering our time to teach at the event. While we're not paid money, the emotional compensation is off the charts. I encourage you to give some thought as to what nonprofit or service organization your talents, skills, and interests would benefit from. Check it out. Attend a meeting or two. If it's a fit, I bet your involvement would not only feed your soul, but also give a boost to your side hustle networking opportunities. Well, that's a wrap for today. You'll find a link to Melissa's website and the show notes on our website, sidehustleheropodcast.com. And I'd love to hear your feedback on the show, on the guests, how this podcast is helping you. What areas could we do better? Shoot me an email message to hello at joanpossivy.com or by DM on Instagram at joanpossivy. Thanks for listening and hustle on.